Hi everyone, Phil from tech for Techs here. Today we're going to be talking about one of the most important things inside any computer, and that is the power supply. If you get a cheap one, they're usually not very efficient, so it costs you more in power, and potentially if something goes wrong with it, it could just go bang, and then not only take the power supply with it, it could destroy your whole computer. So what we're gonna do today is look at one of the higher end power supplies. This is from Be Quiet. It's the Dark Power 12. It's a 750 watt titanium power supply and the titanium basically means it's extremely efficient if you are interested in this product feel free to click on the link in the description below and it will take you to the cheapest price available online Okay, so let's have a look. As you can see, it says, be quiet, dark power 12, no compromise, silent and performance, 750 watts. And as it says there, it's 80 plus titanium, which 80 plus titanium means that at 50% load, it's up to 96% efficient, which compared to, let's say, a bronze, is only 88% efficient, and some which don't even have any ratings on, which you usually find online, they're usually cheap, unbranded ones, I've seen them as low as 60, and I won't be surprised if there are lower ones out there, which basically means the more efficient it is, the less power it wastes, so it's gonna cost you less in power bills. So it gives you a rough idea. Okay, so, Again, the box is pretty much black. As you can see, it's had a bit of a bump in delivery. That's down to the delivery guys, unfortunately, but hey, it's arrived here okay. And also on the box, it says Dark Power 12 there. On the back, doesn't give you a huge amount of information, to be honest. It has got a QR code to scan. Tells you about the different voltages and amperages and everything there as well. On the side, there's nothing there. On that side, there's nothing there. And on the top, well, it just says what it is. So it doesn't actually say on the box, from what I can see, unless I'm going blind, what connections are in there. So we don't know how many PCI Express cables there are or anything along that lines. Again, this has been sent to us as obviously before the product is out. So this is a, what we class as a review sample pre-launch. Uh, so the box may change, they may put a sticker on it and more information, but at the moment it doesn't actually say what connections there are. You can obviously see on the picture there, there is a few, but it doesn't actually specify. But you'd probably scan the QR code and it'll tell you exactly what's in there. But let's open it up and have a look. Okay, so this is what's inside the box. The box itself is basically foam on the inside, just to show you. Power supply comes in that bit. The cables come in this lidded area here. Uh, again, you'll probably not use any of that again. You might stick it on the shelf. You'll probably ch chuck it in a bin. But otherwise, all these different things come with the actual power supply. This is the bit what most people will be confused with. This is basically for overclocking. It lets you change between the 12 volt rail being single or multi-rail. So you basically connect this to the back of the power supply, which is there, and then you put that on the back of your machine. So you, where you'd put your, like, your PCI Express cards, the IO plate there, you'd screw that into there, and you'd be able to change between the two. If you're not sure what that is all about, the basics is, Different people prefer it different ways when they're overclocking. So some will give it, say one way is better than the other and so forth. If you're not sure, just leave it off and you should be fine. But if you're wanting to go to overclocking, you might want to read up a bit more information specifically about single and multi 12 volt rails. Cable lengths, depending on what you're doing uh, or depending on the cable, should I say. The 24 pin one is 60 centimeters so 600 millimeters long so it gives you a rough idea and the cable is all braided with black ends on the same with all the cables no multicolored cables anything like that or any special special colors on specific cables everything is black which is ideal some of the cables like the 12 volt rails you're looking at 70 centimeters on those 
where depending on the cables they're all roughly at least 60 centimeters long it just depends on what uh, cable you're looking at but by the looks of it from what I can see you're pretty much looking at that 60 centimeters or more noise levels are supposed to be pretty low on this power supply we'll plug it in in a few minutes and see if we can actually hear it but I'm guessing it's going to be pretty much silent again if you're going to use it more towards obviously the 750 watts range then it's going to get hotter the fan will speed up and it will be a little bit noisier but again it's saying that it shouldn't go at, when it's running at 100 percent more than 20 decibels let's have a quick look at the box itself so you can see the fan itself there it's one of the be quiet frameless silent wings fan so it's going to be a 12 centimeter fan you can also see all the specifications on the side as well on there if you need top not much on there other than a warranty void then you've got all your connections on this side here so you can connect up whichever molex connections you want sata connections so forth really up to you and then on this side it's got a nice dark power 12 logo on there with the be quiet in the corner and that's very shiny uh, looking so it'll look pretty nice inside a case as long as it's obviously viewable otherwise there's not a huge amount to see it's nice and heavy cabling pretty standard as i said this has come with a european cable but uh, i'm presuming the uk version when it's released will come with a uk version you do have some cable tidies in here as well which is always nice as well as screws uh, as well so otherwise there's not a huge amount to look at for a power supply let's go down the voltage testings and make sure it's running as it should be okay so i've got it hooked up what i'm going to do is just power it on now this is our tester okay it's a thermal tape one it's the dr power two this will tell us basically the voltages and everything going through here so basically the 5 volt rail is going at 5 volt the 12 volt for some reason is going at 11.8 rather than 12 but again that's still within uh, error of margin so there's no issue there we've seen lower than that and caused no issues at all you've got 3.3 volts on the 3.3 12 volt is 12 5 on 5 so everything is absolutely fine there voltage wise as i said the 12 volt is slightly off but again it's no big deal at all the fan itself is pretty quiet when it does turn on it does give a slight rev up but again it's not that loud so it's basically going straight to 100 percent by the sounds of it and then it slows down straight away as well so for example you could probably hear it there go rev up and then it's gone quiet so when you first turn your pc on it will rev up a little bit but as you find that the machine is basically doing a little workload it will be a lot quieter okay cabling wise you've got your 24 pin connection on there so that's obviously for your motherboard 20 or 24 pin i've not seen anyone use 20 pin in years but it's got that ability anyway you've also got your 12 volt p8 which is the one what plugs in next to your cpu that's uh, got the ability to do the 8 pin but there's also a 4 plus 4 so if your motherboard requires an 8 pin and a 4 pin it can do that or an 8 and an 8 it can do that as well so that's pretty good those two cables are 70 centimeters long where you have got multiple sata cables on here from what i can see you've got six seven eight nine ten, around about 12 sata connections on there so that's pretty good you've also got four hard drive connections as well five hard drive connections a lie and a floppy disk drive connection god i've not seen anyone use one of those in a long time you've also got on top of that six yes six pci express power cables for graphics cards and so forth so that's six cables altogether. obviously watch what you're using uh, if you're using six of those cables you better make sure it doesn't exceed that 750 watt limit uh, which gives you a rough idea and then you've got obviously the one cable for connecting up to the back of your pc for the overclocking mode uh, which is 60 centimeters as well so all the cables are basically 60 centimeters long uh, with the exception of the sata cables which are basically 60 centimeters long and then another 15 centimeters between each of the connectors and 70 centimeters for the 8 pin and the 4 plus 
four for the CPU power. Okay, let's go through some of the features. Okay, so it is at 80 plus titanium, which basically means it's very efficient. It's going to save you money on your electricity. It's not going to waste as much electricity as most power supplies on the market. So it may cost you a few pennies more to buy it, but you're saving money over time, especially if you're putting the machine under full load so you're using a lot of power uh, and also if you're using it for long periods of time so ideal for gamers office work and uh, let's say it bitcoin miners it also comes with a frameless silent wing fan which is developed specially for power supplies it's very similar to the silent wing free which is a retail fan but this one is as i said designed specifically for your power supply and it's got high quality fluid dynamic bearings as stated before you've got the overclocking key which is basically a switch which will let you change between multi and single rail 12 volt mode and it's just a flip of a switch basically while you're using it it's got that modular cable design which basically means you just plug in the cables you want so it doesn't restrict airflow by having millions of different cables in there you're not going to use and it's well suited for overclocked high-end gpus or even multiple gpus because of all the different connections there are the power supply also comes with a 10-year warranty, so that shows that the company is basically confident in the product if they're willing to give it a 10-year warranty. So hopefully it shouldn't cause any problems over a long period of time with, or with extended use. So in conclusion, why should you buy this? Well, it is expensive as we said, you are going to be saving money in the long run. It's also a very good brand. It should be very reliable and should cause very little problems going forward. On top of that, it's very quiet. We could not hear the actual fan spinning, apart from the brief second when we first turned it on. Uh, otherwise, it was pretty much silent all the way through, even when we loaded the machine up uh, to basically a high wattage. We should get two 3070s in there with an i7 processor and so forth using roughly around about 650 watts of power altogether and the fan on the power supply still made basically no sound or nothing what we could hear anyway over the rest of the components there's more connections in there than you'll probably ever need with the 750 watt version which we had the 850 watt version as well having six pcie uh, basically cables so you can plug in potentially six graphics cards or if they're ones what take two connections three of them uh, again obviously as long as you don't go over the wattage threshold and the 1000 watt version of this supply can support up to eight of these cables so i think you've probably got more cables there than you'll probably ever need or be able to use because of the wattage limits unless you're using some really low powered items so the question remains, would I buy this? I think I would, yeah. Uh, if I got a really high-end machine and I wanted that reliability that nothing was going to go wrong, as well as all the connections I'm ever going to need, then this power supply would be the power supply I would buy, and I would highly recommend it.